This week on Machinery Pete TV, part two of our visit to the first classic green reunion, featuring the oldest known John Deere D tractor. One of the most popular displays at the show, the guy with all the decals. And what would be the highlight of any deer collection, a 1917 Waterloo boy. Your machinery is a serious investment. And at the heart of every farming operation, some call it a passion. We're Machinery Pete TV, and today we'll cover everything from auction roundups to the classics to the latest trends and technology. Machinery Pete, the most trusted name in farm equipment. Machinery Pete thanks these premier sponsors for their support. Sullivan Auctioneers, let our team of professionals show you how to make your auction a success. Visit SullivanAuctioneers.com. Welcome back to Machinery Pete TV, folks, back at the Classic Green Reunion in Grand Island, Nebraska. Folks, the reason I love this new event so much, there's a great variety of John Deere stuff here, not just the old tractors. Right behind me, for example, the world's nicest 4400 Combine, 1975 model. A young Nebraska farmer bought this last fall, only 480 hours on it. And how about sitting right in front of that S770? The variety of stories, just amazing. Before all that fun, we need to go back to the studio and catch up on the latest farm equipment news. All right, thanks, Pete. I'm Clint Griffiths. The impact of the virus weighing heavily on the minds of farmers and ranchers. That's according to the latest Purdue CME Group Ag Economy Barometer. For the second month in a row, the barometer dropped, this time 25 points to a reading of 96. That's the first time the barometer has fallen below 100 since October of 2016. Researchers say it effectively wipes out all of the improvement in farmer sentiment that took place following that 2016 election. The reading now 72 points below the record high hit just back in February. We asked farmers what their number one concern was regarding their farm and the COVID-19 situation. 42% said they were most concerned about market access, 37% said they were most concerned about financial considerations, and just 13% said they were most worried about health and safety. However, when we followed up, 35% of the farmers in our survey said that they had already made some changes in their farm operation because of COVID-19. Farmers also indicating that due to the current environment, they are reluctant to make those large capital investments in equipment or buildings on their farming operation. Now back to Machinery P. Stay tuned folks, you're not gonna wanna miss this. Coming up, one of the most famous tractors in the world, the John Deere bathtub tractor, it's been in the museum in Waterloo. Hey folks, real treat here. One of the most famous tractors in the world, the famous John Deere bathtub tractor, 1917. Dan Thomas, you are the owner from Plain City, Ohio. First of all, how long have you owned this tractor? Well, I bought the tractor in 2010 and actually my whole family owns it now. It's not just for me, it's my son and my grandson. So hopefully at some point he'll get the interest and keep going with it, so. Very cool. Well, Dan, tell us the story here. Uh, the history on this bathtub tractor, 1917? 1917, it was uh, built uh, by a water their gas engine and that was before John Deere bought them. And so they were experimenting with a tractor because shipping costs were so high that uh, they, they couldn't get water their boys crossways on a railroad car. So if they could get a tractor small enough to do that, they could send more tractors on a railway car. So that cut their cost of shipping. And uh, so that was a premise to start with. And of course they built a more efficient tractor. And, and so they started work on this in 1917. And then as Deere, John Deere bought them in 1918, they continued with the experiment and then it turned into the John Deere's first production tractor, the Model D. So when this was being, I guess you'd say, kind of developed, uh, there's quite a story here on, on the pieces of the tractor. I guess that were kind of buried. Yeah, for some unknown reason, uh, the main case of the tractor, which is the gray part, uh, it was buried underground and uh, during the uh, 
a construction around the uh, plant there, and they dug up this main case. And uh, right this away, was just construction crew. A construction crew, yes. And that was early 90s? Uh, 1992. Actually, uh, July of 1992 to be wow. exact. And so we were at a uh, John Deere Tractor Expo at the time, and uh, so a friend of mine bought it from the construction crew for 50 bucks and a case of beer. <laughs> and so. Uh, awesome. You know, all construction workers got to have their beer, so. I got to ask, what kind of beer was it, Dan? I don't know what kind of beer. <laughs> That's the only missing part of the story. But, I mean, a, a piece of American agricultural history dug up out of the ground by accident. Amazing. Yeah, and it's uh, really unknown why it was buried. Uh, you know, there was a foundry there. Why didn't they melt it down and put it into another tractor or whatever? But for some reason, it got buried. Now, this tractor, I was just down to the museum for the 100-year for the Waterloo and, and your tractor, the bathtub tractor was displayed there. Yes. How long has it been in the museum? Uh, it was uh, put in the museum in uh, September of uh, 2017 okay. and I uh, got it out in 2019 okay. in April. And you've got this thing outside and you've been running it. Yes. Uh, was that, that was important to you? Yes, very important to me. Uh, uh, I'd like to continue the collecting of tractors and anytime I can get an eight-year-old kid on it to drive or younger children, I'd like to do that to get their interest up and maybe get them away from an iPad or an iPhone and get them outside and doing something. Hey folks, here I am. I traveled all the way to Grand Island, Nebraska, and I met my neighbor, Trav Jordy. Trav, great to see you again. Yes, good to see you also. Trav, you're a Rochester legend. People have been asking me everywhere I go, you're from Rochester, you know that guy, and you're that guy. You've been doing John Deere decals for, gosh, over 40 years, haven't you? Yes, since 76 with John Deere. So you and, and your wife Shirley, you worked yes. directly with John Deere to get the licensing to make the, the official decals. Yes. Tell me about the business now, the John Deere decals. So, and you were a teacher for many years in Rochester, industrial, industrial, industrial arts. Industrial arts. Okay. And now it would be called Tech Ed. Right. So how did you Change. find time to build the business, Trav? After school, weekends, and of course, I had a, a knowledge of tractors from okay. my past. Okay. I was always interested. So. It was just a matter of continuing on. What is it making decals? I mean, it, to me it sounds complicated. And uh, has the process changed over the last 40 plus years? It has changed some. Uh, the biggest change for me was doing it myself and now I hire it done. Yeah. Imagine an event like this, uh, the classic Green Reunion with, with folks from all over here with their collection. They must come up, I mean, you must be old friends with, with almost all of them. Right. There are some fellows that will come over today from Tasmania wow. and New Zealand. Yeah. Okay. Quite often uh, they, will, they will be from different parts of Europe. Okay. Yeah. What have you enjoyed most about it over the years travel? The people. Yeah. It's, it's kind of like a, oh, a family reunion when you go to a, a function such as this. Hey folks, stay tuned. Here at the Classic Green Reunion, we've got some amazing tractors from my friend Steve Planbeck out of Kennesaw, Nebraska. Trust me, you are not gonna wanna miss an up close look at these babies. Your next piece of equipment is on machinerypeat.com. Search equipment from dealerships across the country to find what you're looking for. Only on MachineRepeat.com. Hey folks, I'm here with Steve Plambeck from Kennesaw, Nebraska. Steve, hey, thanks for the invitation. To Thank be you this for event. being here. It's great to have you. Well, you're so. on the board of directors. Hats off. You guys pulled this event together in less than a year. Just, yeah. I, I don't know how you did it, Steve. I don't know how we did it either, but we did. <laughs> it's, it's, it was a show committee of probably about 15 to 20 people that really wanted this event and everybody had the same goal in mind and it was just fantastic. It just seemed like there was it was a, a need for an event like this to, to the love of John, all things John Deere yep. to focus it and again you guys have, have done it here and uh, 
uh, people are having such a good time. And how, how are you holding up after helping put holding this thing great. together? Holding up great. Awesome. So. Now you've got a, a number of tractors on display here, Steve. Tell us about your 4430. This is the third 4430 built. Wow. So serial number 1002. The first serial number was 1000. So Aren't, this is the third one built. Does anybody know where 1 and 2 are? Actually, we do. You do. So we know where 1000 okay. is and we know where 1001 is. So Piece of history, number three, iconic tractor. Yeah, I think it's got the fifth sound guard cab built. So wow. it's, you know, I'd, I'd like to know the build dates and everything, but it'd be interesting to know if it was all right. built on one. It had to be one of the first few days of the right. 30 series production. Right. So. Well, let's spin around here, Steve, and get a look at your uh, amazingly restored 65-40-20 LP synchro high crop. Yeah. Uh, this was uh, a disaster when we got it and everything. <laughs> Where did you get it? A friend of mine uh, in Iowa had found it years ago, drug it out of the swamps of Louisiana, wow. southern Louisiana. And, uh, but yeah, it's one of 12 built, and there was 12 LP synchros built. There was four LP power shift high crops built. And Steve, and do you do the restoration work yourself on this stuff? I do. I got a couple guys that help me in everything and uh, yeah. It's labor of love? Labor, I, yeah, labor of love. It's, you know, you learn a lot through the years and everything, what you do, what you don't do. And Tell us about your 4630 uh, hydraulic front wheel assist. That's the last one that we finished just a few weeks ago. Just got it ready for the show? Just got it ready for the show. This is a 4630 factory open station, factory hydraulic front power shift. Kind of like you talked to Bob Herring and yep. all that. Yep. With his 4430 power shift, this is kind of the sister. Right. Or big brother, I guess you'd say. So It's a good looking big brother. Yeah. So, and I, this is the first generation two restoration I've done. And I tell you that gets, <laughs> there's an addiction there that there's going to be more of them. There's going to be more of them. Yeah, that's when they're done and to jump on that and drive, it's now, now pretty Steve, fun. And so. then this is your 3020? Yeah, this is a 1971 3020 diesel power shift standard. Uh, Gorgeous. We, we found it up in northern Saskatchewan. Really? Most of these standards went up to Canada and um, the ones I've, I've been looking up in Canada for tractors for the years, especially right. the late model standards and lots of synchros, very, very, very few power shifts up there. Folks, don't go anywhere. You're not going to want to miss this. We've got a rare tractor to show you coming up. One of three ever made in 1972, John, your 4320 factory hydraulic front wheel assist, yellow. Let the proven performance of Prosaro fungicide maximize your grain quality, yield, and profit this season. This season, while work for you may have changed, our season is underway. American agriculture farms on for our family and yours. Okay, folks, it's time to learn about the oldest known John Deere D tractor. And I'm here with Justin Reed. Justin, you're from Shawnee, Kansas? Yes. And this is your father, Kenny? Yes, this is my, my dad's tractor. Uh, he's owned it about two years. Okay. Uh, bought it at an auction, and uh, he's, he's always had uh, kind of that tenacity for D's. Okay. And uh, a, friend of, a good friend of his had uh, told him about this and convinced him that he needed to go bid on it. Wow. So 1923. Yes. And the is the story. Correct me if I'm wrong, Justin. The story is the first two Ds were kind of scrapped in production. Yes. According to the, the notes in archive, the uh, serial number you know ending in one and serial number ending in two okay. were were both scrapped due to casting issues. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Number three is unknown, and, and this is uh, number four this is built. Uh, yes. Almost 100 years old now. Exactly. It, it so will be soon. When this thing was built, I understand. It headed up into North Dakota? Yes, uh, so these went to Minot. A lot of them uh, were shipped to Minot, North Dakota. Uh, the 23D was hand-built, and uh, there were 50 of them built. And that was an experimental farm up in Minot? Um, that's what we believe, yeah, that it was yeah. sent up there for experimental use uh, sure. at the farm up there. Okay, now what, uh, as you look at this tractor, Justin, and you collect yourself too, yes. what, what jumps out at you? What makes it special other than Obviously, the, the oldest known deer, uh, <laughs> Model D. 
Uh, the first 50 have a lot of unique features, uh, what we call the ladder radiator with the slots in the sides of the radiator, uh, a, a, a uh, hand-built front axle. It's not a casting like the later ones. Uh, what's unique is there are small little details that change along the way. This one has four holes in the steering wheel spoke. The next one has three, okay. next one two, and then uh, our other tractor over there, it has no holes in the steering wheel. And a couple down the line, you own the fifth to the last made deep? Yes, so it's, it's five from the end, and that tractor actually come two miles from my dad's house. One day he got a call from a neighbor and he said, uh, I've got an old tractor, I'm, I just bought this farm, and he said, uh, I'm wanting to clear everything off, there's a bunch of old cars and stuff. And I went down to the junkyard and they said, uh, I should probably come and see you and see if you're interested in it before they junked it. And uh, so my dad said, where do you live? And he said, well, look out your front door, I'm two miles across in front of you. <laughs> And so a couple days later, we went and looked at it, walked around, didn't have hood, radiator, fenders, wheels, or anything on it. And uh, we we're looking at it, and he said, well, I'm not too impressed with this one. And he walked around back and read the serial number, and he said, now I'm interested. Always impressed. Yeah. Wow. That's, uh, and again, Dad has a kind of a thing for D. You have a, a D yeah. Industrial down there, too? Yes. So we have a 1938 D Industrial down there that uh, was shipped to Kansas. Uh, it's got a... A lot of add-ons and, and little things, so he uh, likes like accessories and stuff, so it's got dual exhaust kit on it. Um, it's got a BG uh, hydraulic kit, so it uses the power takeoff on the DI to power a pump okay. and give you hydraulics. So now here again, the oldest known D to exist. What do people, time you guys have owned this, what do people say when they see it or get up close to it, this piece of John Deere history? Um, they're just fascinated that it's still here with us, you know, that it's survived this many years and, and is very well intact. Okay, folks, you want to talk about a rear tractor, we got one here with our friend Mike Smith from Marion, Ohio. Mike, your 724320, it's yellow and it's front wheel assist. Tell us yep. about this thing. Well, the thing is, it's, um, it's a factory documented through Deer that it, it was a factory front wheel and they made three of them. Uh, I guess basically painted three of them that yeah. color. Yep. And there was a uh, Sheriff's Department of Fresno, California, hmm. and they had had 4020s before, and I, the way I take it, they needed a little bit more horsepower. Sure. So they, they, had, they ordered these three, and uh, I'm for, very fortunate to have one of them. Now, Mike, you and your wife, Denise, you have a, quite a collection at home. You have 30, 40 tractors, John? Yeah, they're about 40 tractors. Uh, okay. My dad started it back uh, when we used to tractor pull in our days, and then Dad sold the pulling tractor, then he started collecting two cylinders, okay. and then we've kind of went away from them, and and now it's pretty much well full of uh, new gens, okay. and uh, it's kind of and this is where, I mean, this is my generation. This is what I grew up when I started when sure. I first driving tractors. So that's where you know the interest of mine became. What do people say when they see your your industrial yellow 4320 front wheel? I mean. One of three, it must turn a lot of heads. When well, you see them it. scratch your heads. They're like, they don't understand, you know, what's, what's the yellow? Why? So right. you explain to them why and wh where it comes from, and then they're like, oh, well, that makes sense. And, and Mike, it's sort of your thing. You're trying to collect these, these 20 series factory front wheel assist. Is that correct? Open station? Yes. When I get done, I'll have a full line of what I guess basically call a full line of uh, front wheel new gens, starting with the 3020. I have the 4020. Uh, the 4320 in the green and the yellow, and we have, we'll have, have the 4230 and the 4430, which both of them are open stations also, and they're factory for sure. Now, is this like your, your kids, Mike? It's, is it hard to pick your favorite, or or do you have to pick the, the rare one of three, the yellow? The yellow well, one? the the 3020 that I have is, was, was my first one uh, that I basically bought, and my dad always taught me buy the rare one. Don't see how many you can buy, but buy the rare ones. And it's 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 a 3020. It's probably the one that I'm probably noted for is, is the 3020 power shift uh, front wheel assist mm. standard. So it's and it's a gas. So it's kind of rare. But this one I'm standing in front of is kind of kind of special in my heart because it's I like this one. Hey folks, I hope you've enjoyed our special episode here at the first ever Classic Green Reunion in Grand Island, Nebraska. So much cool John Deere history here, but I think they nailed this perfect in the theming of the show. They said it's all about the people, and that is spot on. Now tune in next week on Machinery PTV. We'll have a bunch more cool things to show you, but right now, I gotta go check out some more John Deere stuff. 
Machinery Peak thanks these premier sponsors for their support. Sullivan Auctioneers. Let our team of professionals show you how to make your auction a success. Visit SullivanAuctioneers.com.